Okay, recently got my level one and feel like I'm really struggling to come up with workouts that aren't just repeats of things that I've seen in the past. Would be interested in a show where you explain your processes for designing workouts, how you plan them out for some of us new people that understand the basics but seem to miss the mark when we create a workout. What is the workout? I feel like where I start is what do I want out of the workout? That's what I need to start with. So first question to answer, what am I trying to do with this workout? Yeah, that's a really good one. Shortly after that, I would say, what did I do yesterday and what am I doing tomorrow? Because those are two really good things to think about when you just sit down to decide what you're going to do today. Is because if there isn't really a plan for your three on one off or your two on one off or your five on two off, two off it's hard to not repeat yourself. It's hard not to get in the same exact pattern every week. So I think it's good to think about what you want to get out of the workout primarily, but then what's my plan for tomorrow's workout and what did I do yesterday so that I'm not repeating the same stimulus? What have you done yesterday? What are you doing tomorrow? Where does it fit in the week? What's the point of the workout? What are you trying to get out of it? I think that's a question I ask a lot in my training beyond, you know, I, I think for programming for a general affiliate, typically, what are you trying to do with this workout? should fall in the basket of, okay, I'm just trying to get my affiliate members fitter potentially. Um, and then in that sense, what you've done the day before and what you're doing tomorrow is far more important, maybe in the sense of a competitor where you are training at such a high volume that variance is so much more hindered, I would say. Like you're almost handcuffed in terms of variance because you're doing so much every day. Um, the question becomes, what do I need stimulus-wise? Uh, to get out of this workout. Um, from there, where do you go? Yeah, in that situation, a lot of times too, variance when programming at a high volume can keep you healthy or vice versa can hurt you. So it's really more important when you're doing a lot to make sure that maybe you're not repeating the same movement combinations, movement patterns over and over again. I think in this question, since he's saying he just got his level one, we can maybe assume that He's writing workouts for himself, or let's just say he's writing workouts for a small group of people. Like there's a group of five or six people that work out with this guy. And it's like, hey, how do I do this um, past the basics? And maybe the basics that he's talking about is at least once every two weeks, there's a heavy day. Um, at least once every two weeks, we're going to go really long. So let's just assume really long is like 30 minutes plus. And then outside of that, you're living off of what? Couplets, triplets, AMRAPs, a lot of for time, some chippers and then maybe some varying formats. And I think in 2003, if you ask this question, most people give you the same answer because they're more so regurgitating what they've learned at the level one. I think nowadays people have become a lot more creative. People are understanding a lot more of what CrossFit is in the idea that, hey, interval-based training is CrossFit. Training long is still CrossFit. Doing single modality work is great, but you don't have to do a long workout that's just run, bike, row, or ski. So I think that's something really cool to dive into is that let's say it's Monday and I rested Saturday and Sunday. So I've got anything at my disposal. And let's say you decide, Taylor, to do um, uh, the CrossFit Games workout from 2019 first cut, right? Running, squat snatching, and leatherless rope climbing. So for most people, that is a intense metabolic workout when done correctly, but there's also a lot there, right? You're doing upper body pulling in a strict fashion. You're doing a high level, high skill, moderately heavy barbell movement. So then what do you do on Tuesday? If you decide, hey, I'm going to do first cut on Monday, then it's Tuesday. How do you approach Tuesday? So if we're doing first cut, which is four rounds for time, three legless, seven squat snatch, 400 meter run, where it starts with the run. 400 meter run, three leg of seven squat snatch. That's like an 18 to 25 minute workout, 12 legless rope climbs, some squatting, 28 squat reps and some running. I think the next day I probably look to dumbbells a bit. Ah, man, first cut's tough because you got some pulling. I would press in some form or fashion. Um, I would look to dumbbells potentially, maybe a dumbbell bench press um paired with potentially i just look at things like this what's the volume of squatting what's the volume of upper body reps and what's the volume of monostructural and that particular movement 
Um, and if I'm just doing one workout a day, I would like the next day to look probably quite a bit different. Um, so maybe that's something like JT, like JT is so different from that workout. Ideally, if you're hitting the stimulus, that's like six minutes or less. Um, and it's just completely different. It's short, a lot of pressing, not as much pulling. The thing about a squat snatch that is tough is it's a hinge and a squat in one movement. So it's like, okay, am I going to be redundant in the form of, I'm going to have them pull from the floor again, or am I going to be redundant in the form of, okay, I'm going to have them squat again. And I, I'm ambivalent on that matter. If it's a squat snatch, I'm not as, I don't, I don't think a squat snatch, at least at that weight is more dominant one way or the other between a hinge or a, a squat. So maybe you do neither the next day and JT is neither. Yeah, and I definitely set you up a little bit saying that we're doing that workout on Monday because there's a lot that people like me and you think about, but we can expect most people not to dissect it that deeply. The good thing about that workout is it gives you a lot of freedom the next day and Wednesday because nothing is really high volume. It's not a lot of running. So if you decided you wanted to jump rope the next day or do box jumps, you would still be fine. There's not a lot of squatting. So if you decided you wanted to do Karen the next day, you could still do that. The next day, if you decided you wanted to do pull-ups, I might recommend another hanging variation like a toes to bar instead because there isn't any bent arm pulling in that movement. But it does kind of – it it gives you a lot of freedom to mess up on Tuesday is what I'm saying. So, like, the only way doing first cut you could really, really mess up is be like, cool, let's do a ton of dumbbell snatches, a ton of pull-ups, and let's run again, right? And let's make sure – Let's make sure it's 15 to 20 minutes. That's really the only way you're going to mess up something like that. So for most people, it's still kind of a blank canvas. What I would recommend, though, is exactly what you said, is to keep the movements simple because you had a high skill gymnastics and a high skill barbell. So keep the movements a little bit more simple and go short would be my recommendation for them. Yeah, short was the big the big thing for me. I think, you know, when I start, okay, this guy's talking about he just got a level one. I think where I would start is go on .com and just look back as far as you can. Like start early and look at workouts. And then for the first workout you're trying to create, come up with two to four movements that you want to do in this workout. Man, that's tough. Because <laughs> I'm trying to gauge the level of K is this guy. A wall ball. Overhead squat, thruster, front squat. Like that's what I'm picturing in my mind when I say pick four movements you want to do. Yeah, so I think a really good exercise to do, and I can remember doing this really early on, is get down a notepad or get on your computer and break up all the movements into categories. Break it up into upper body pushing, upper body pulling, lower body pulling or hinging, lower body bending, so to say squatting, single leg movements, carry movements so like so like horizontal displacement right and that goes for all different kind of carries sleds all that and then monostructural movements and we're going to keep it really simple this is another big topic but let's just limit that to like jumping rope running rowing skiing so you know any machine swimming biking all that stuff do that and then just like it says right in world-class fitness five to six days a week, mix these up in as many different variations as possible. Redundancy is the enemy. So for someone, you could literally go through and say, all right, cool. This week, I'm going to do a couple on Monday, a triple on Tuesday, a chipper on Wednesday. And I'm going to make sure that I'm pulling from those different categories. And I'm not going to try to repeat any movement combinations for a few months. You could do that. And then the following week, be like, all right, cool. Instead of this couplet, I'm going to do a heavy day. Instead of this triplet, I'm going to go really, really long. And then on Wednesday, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a couplet or a triplet. You could do it that simply starting out and still be really, really varied just by getting those categories and trying to say, cool, this week I did bench press. Next week, maybe I do dips as my upper body push. This week I did pull-ups. Maybe next week I need to make sure that I do some kind of rope climb variation. Things like that, I think, is a really easy way to keep yourself honest and make sure you're not coming back to the same movements over. And to extrapolate on that list of movement variation categories, I would think, you know, upper body push, upper body pull. Did you, you talk about 
monostructural weightlifting gymnastics, a list of those as well and categorizing them into all those things. I think in addition to that, when you're looking to write a workout, I would start super simple. I mean, early on when I started writing my own workouts, it was super simple, typically couplets or triplets. And for time is, or AMRAPs are the easiest way to do it. The, the simplest workout formats, um, because you don't have to worry about fitting a certain number of reps into an exact time domain. You have room for error, right? Like if I'm coming up with an EMOM and I have no experience writing workouts, they're going to be probably pretty either way too easy initially, or just not completable initially until I understand, okay, what's possible within this minute or this time domain. So I'd stick to for time and AMRAPs. And then I would think about balancing modalities and having complementary movement patterns as much as possible, at least in terms of your aim for intensity, complementary movement patterns are ideal. Um, uh, you know, in the name of variance, you need some redundancy, but complementary movement patterns, the perfect CrossFit esque example is the squat and pull up. So the thruster and the pull up, you're not pulling the bar. Um, you're pushing it with your legs and you're not pushing the pull up bar with your legs. You're pulling it with your arms. So those movements don't hinder one another. You can do each nicely. You can go fast when you do them. So think about complementary movement patterns and then balancing reps of each movement so that they take a similar time frame, aside from maybe a monostructural portion within a workout. So if you think about first cut, it has those seven squat snatches and the three legless rope climbs. Time to complete each for the athlete that's balanced and does well in that workout is probably pretty similar. Those seven squat snatches probably take around a minute. And those three legless rope climbs, maybe to 15 feet, not 18. I think that workout was like an 18 foot rope. So if it's a 15 foot rope climb, uh, legless, those three reps probably again, take a minute and the run takes two minutes. So think about balancing time per repetition within your set. I mean, you think about a workout that's like, okay, five rounds for time, 20 wall ball shots, 10 power cleans. You're probably looking at, you know, 20 pound ball, 135. You're probably looking at similar time domains. So something like that I would look to. Yeah, I think um, complementary movements is a great point. And go back for people that are like, well, what is that really? Just go back and look at most of the girls, look at most of the workouts that are couplets. And there's usually a push pull either as a squat and a pull up, like a hanging movement, like you're talking about, or a pull from the floor and an upper body press, Elizabeth, Diane, stuff like that. Um, one thing that I think is easy to do is if you know, hey, I want to go short, or if you know I want to go medium, or you know I want to go long, the number of reps that you're doing for most people starting out, it's hard to do too few. It's really easy to overdo it and do too many. And what I mean by that is um, I'm going to do a 20-minute AMRAP of 50 cal row, 50 wall ball, and um, – um, 50 push-ups, right? It's going to be really easy for a novice person to start out rowing at their all-time best 2K pace, um, doing 50 wall balls on Brogan, and trying to do push-ups in two sets. They're going to look up. They're going to be six minutes into the workout and think to themselves, I can barely row anything now. I'm going to be doing fives on the wall ball. I'm going to be doing twos on the push-up. So that's an easy mistake to make. If you're going to go long, and it's something cyclical, meaning you're going to be doing lots of rounds, keep your chunk small so that you can keep moving for that whole 20 minutes. That's a really good way to make sure that you're getting the desired stimulus of a long workout. Likewise, when you're doing something short, if you want to ensure that you're having maximum intensity for a sprint, don't give yourself huge chunks. Keep your chunks pretty medium right? Think of 21, 15, nine workouts. Most people look at the 21, they do them unbroken. The 15 is the hard round. Maybe they have to break a little on the 15 and then on the nine, they can hold on and do those unbroken. So thinking about number, number of reps per movement per round is a good exercise to make sure that whatever your desired intensity or stimulus was that you achieve it. Yeah. And, and looking at overall volume within a workout as well, I think on the programming lecture, they say low volume is like 25 reps or fewer on the day. So like your session has 25 reps total or less. I think they say moderate volume is like 25 to 60 or maybe 
25 to 90, can't remember. And then high volume would be anything over 100, 100 to 200 reps. Um, so play with that, vary that as well. And of course, your low volume days are heavy or super fast. Your moderate volume days can be, you know, your six to nine minute time domain, really high intensity. And your high volume days can be longer workouts at a light, light, lightweight, et cetera, or even body weight. Yeah, I think that's the next step, right? So you have your desired stimulus and you have your um, varied time domains, which is really, really important for people. And we're talking about Metcons primarily now and not heavy days. Usually don't, you, you know, usually people don't struggle to figure out a good heavy day. Um, as long as you're varying those heavy days as you go and you're not always doing deadlifts, you're not always doing squats. But looking at, okay, on Monday, I went long. And usually when you go long, it's also going to be a high volume. Mm. So, okay, cool. Then I want to do a five minute workout just by the nature of a five minute workout. Typically you're not going to overdo the volume, yep. but if you're in that medium time domain of like an eight to 12 minutes and it's something like JT, like, Hey, I'm just going to do a 12 minute AMRAP of JT. <laughs> you're going to end up doing hundreds of pressing reps and you're like, wait, I wanted that workout to kind of be like a medium fast feel. I, I didn't really get that at all. I was just kind of staring at the clock and waiting on my arms to come back. Yeah. Well, yeah, you learned a lesson, right? JT is JT because it's so dense in the types of press. It's really easy for people to look at that and just be like, ah, it's not going to be that bad, but it hits you in a different way mm -hmm. as another classic 21, 15, nine triplet would. 